really, really drives me nuts when a camera comes out and they don't give you any sample photos to use anywhere or RAWs that you can download to see what it's like editing it. So I'm trying to be the first person to do that. So download this, edit with me if you want. Today we are dealing with this sunset photo with the Mavic Air 2. We want to take the ugly raw format file from the memory card and edit in Adobe Lightroom. It's like 10 bucks a month. If you can't afford that, get a job. We're probably going to wind up breaking a lot of rules because it's a sunset. I mean, there's this giant flaming ball of energy and super, super dark foreground. You kind of have to feel it out because every sunset is different. The good news is though, there's usually a lot of stuff you can do that looks good. Whether we want to go just focus on the sun or we wanted to do this really moody thing where we just focus on the foreground. There's a lot of options. I'm just screwing around with it now. But if you're taking a wide, long shot, put something in the foreground to give it perspective. These lenses are really short and they work much better when you have something in the foreground. So we're gonna start from zero, which is here, and it already looks colorful and rich because it's a sunset and there's a lot going on. First thing I'm gonna do is take a look at this meter up here. This is gonna show me what is overexposed and what's underexposed. Basically what is so bright that it's pure white and unusable, and what is so black that it's just in the shadow realm. I need to make sure that everything stays inside of this area so that I'm using the maximum amount of color space and data in the photo. That gives you the best range of brights and shadows that are all completely visible. Again because this is a sunset I'm just doing this to begin with I know I'm gonna wind up breaking a little bit of rules later but to start take the highlights all the way up and the shadows all the way down next if you hold alt or command on a Mac and you drag the whites up all the way up until you see a clipping which is like when this red stuff appears pull it back before you see too much of the image being covered in red it's just a guideline though because we know that the Sun is never going to be exposed perfectly the same works on the opposite side. You can hold alt and drag the blacks down until you start seeing an area that's just gone to no no land. If it's only a teeny bit, I will keep it right on the edge. Now I can decide how bright and how dark I want my highlights and shadows to actually be. This is one you just have to screw around with until you feel it out. For now, I'll keep it here. Shadows, I'm going to have to add some to the shadows because it's just too dark otherwise and I'm not I haven't done enough of this photo yet to decide if I want it to be moody, so. Next, clarity. Add some, take some away, and decide what feels good. This is like way too emo album cover, so I don't want to go too much on the clarity. However, what I will do is make a note of what areas on this picture look really nice when I add the clarity. So with clarity added, um, the waves, the wa white parts of the waves are much more visible. I like the sheen on the edge of the tower here, but I think that's the only thing that really looks nice with clarity. So make a note of that because we will go add that manually later. If I take away some clarity, I think that makes the sand on the beach look really nice. Um, that's just a preference thing. Just because there's a lot of contrast in certain areas like the waves back there, I'm just I'm going to add a tiny bit of that. And then for dehaze, normally I don't add too much of this because it gives me a bad, weird, dark effect. But in this case, there was some um, moisture in the air and I think dehaze would help a little bit because it adds some color back to the clouds back there. And I'm starting to see this nice little pink area back there with no clouds way off in the distance. So I'll add some vibrance, not too much, maybe like 20. Same with saturation, just a tad. What can I really do with this photo now? Because too much of this is focused just on the sunset and nothing on the foreground. The rest of this is a preference thing. So aside from just setting up a basic you know, edited shot to maximize the color here, or maybe changing the color temperature to make it look a little bit more red, which is pleasant, but it's not gonna, you know, blue looks nice as well. It's not the end of the world. That's just a preference thing. I'll keep it a little gold just cause that looks, you know, rich in the sunset, but I, I don't think there's really a whole bunch of crazy stuff I can do just with these. If you play around with them and you don't see anything that immediately makes you go, oh my gosh, and you wanna show mom, then, you know, you don't have to sit there for a million years. So next, I'm gonna come down to here to detail. I don't want it too sharp, but I do wanna add a little noise reduction, not too much, just there. I don't want a vignette or anything. The next part of this is again, a preference. If you see something you don't like, like this really dark blue back here, you can click on this little dot, click on the blue area, and see if you wanna change the hue of that a little bit, just that tone and I don't think it makes a big difference, so I don't care. Is there anything in here that would look much nicer if I added some saturation? The orange adds a lot of life to the photo, so I might do a little bit of that, actually. That's usually the one I avoid, but in this case, that's helpful. 
and I'm assuming yellow will be mm, that doesn't do too much green non-existent in this photo aqua same blue that's changing oh see that over there on the right that weird blue that I did not like I can desaturate it so we have less attention to that strange difference in color temperature where it's super dark so so I'm gonna deplete that purple um same thing I'll just take it down a little bit the magenta uh, it's not helping or hurting so down a little bit the brightness of those colors independently I can raise the red now th this I'm not expecting anything super special from I do actually do this every time just in case there is some range of color that will really help the photo if it changes lightness or if it changes saturation. So none of them really made a big difference and I didn't change anything else. In the end, I only wound up adding a little bit of orange to the sunset to make it more fun and taking away some saturation from that weird blue in the clouds back there that just looked ugly. Usually, if it's, let's say it's a photo of some fall scenery, I will take away most of the saturation from every color except for like orange and red and yellow. So it makes the trees look really heavy and nice and the sky isn't like overwhelmingly saturated and it looks, you know, it takes it aw attention away from everything else colorful. That looks a lot more mature than just adding every single crazy color. So like pick two of your favorites and stick to those. Now this is usually where all the fun begins. Maybe in this photo, maybe not because it's already halfway there as it is being a beautiful sunset. But when I take a photo like this and I start brushing, I usually look for which things stand out and just adjust those. Like earlier, remember I said that when we changed the blacks, we dropped the blacks way down, it made the water look really nice. So now that I've made a note of that, first thing I'm gonna do is take a pretty wide brush. I have a little wheel on my mouse so I can just drag the size back and forth. And I'm going to drag this just over the water to give it a general. And if I keep my mouse on that dot, it shows me what is and isn't covered. And now, Let's just drag down those blacks like we saw earlier. Oh, okay. Maybe a little bit. If I take this down a tiny bit, it adds a lot to the sheen over the water. So since I've done that, I'm going to add a new brush just over the clouds and see if there's anything fun we can do with that. Starting with a change in color temperature. Maybe that helps. No, more purple. And usually it's something like clarity. So here, I'll add a tiny bit of clarity, make it a little more pink and a little more red. Okay, now that those are taken care of, I'm going to drag a brush right over the, uh, the edges. I'm gonna see if adding some clarity will bring out some of the highlighted, the lip of the rail here. But the problem is that there's this weird fade around it. So we need to drag down some shadow just to try and negate that and make it blend in with the background a little bit better. If I were to click on this dot, the mask, and delete it, you can see the difference in what I just added. And remember that not every time I'm showing you something like that it's going to be phenomenal, but you need to know how to apply something like that later on when it will make a big difference. And for all this land back here, I think it's just way too dark and it just got on the bad side of the cloud, so I'm going to draw one big brush over all of this and then a bigger one in the lagoon and see if I can just raise the exposure and make it more orange. A lot of times when you are staring too hard at a photo like this, you're zoomed in completely. You, you kind of get out of place with what you're doing. I'm gonna change my zoom to a one quarter view and take a look at it from far away just to give myself a sanity check to make sure I'm not going too crazy with the zoom and scrubbing up these little details that don't matter and then my photo winds up looking super weird. So you have to remember to zoom out and make sure that you're on a good path once in a while. Most people are going to see it from their phone anyway at a smaller size. I might drag the exposure up a little bit because it's debatably dark, uh, but that is a preference thing. I could, if I really wanted to, drag a really big brush here, raise a little bit of shadows and some exposure so that you can see more of the foreground. However. I, I wanted to focus on the sun back there. This photo looks really nice so far and I'm already excited to deliver it to the homeless troll who lives in the smokestack here. There is one trick you constantly see on Instagram though. It's making a brush over the sun and adding like this giant sunspot. I'm going to make a new brush, make it really, really big, and then draw, draw right in the center over the sun. Drag clarity down, exposure up, like kind of a lot, and then make it a different color like right here will make it even more orange 
and a little more pink. You can play with the clarity, maybe you want it more, but the really popular one is to just do a big open sunburst like that. And if you really feel bold, you can dehaze it. It adds kind of like a white fluff over it, I guess. I don't want to do that right here. I'm going to leave it as it is. Next, another brush, this time very small, and I'm going to click on one to one so that I can zoom in more. Hold space to get the hand and drag this up. And with that little new brush, I'm going to draw right over the light here and over a light here. There was a photo I liked that I couldn't use because the angle was bad, but I timed it so that the photo took when the little strobe lights were going on the tower. So now I have to fake it like some poser idiot. I think a lot of clarity, some exposure, and then dragging the temperature down back a little bit. I should probably raise whites a lot though because I don't want it to seem that faded. If I hold alt with the brush selected and erase just some of the loose edges so that you don't see that weird outside part that makes it obviously fake and then that is passable you can it's up to you if you want to screw around with that more i don't though this tower is a little dark so I'll, i think i'm going to do just one big fat brush over it and add a little bit of exposure so that you can see what is going on i also noticed that this whole area the continent back here is a little weird looking less orange and less exposure will probably do the job fine. Next, we can look at the road down here and draw a brush just over that, making this street a slightly different color temperature, raising shadows and exposure, and then adding a, a lot of clarity. Makes the little dots inside the center of the road stand out. And now you can see that there is a little bit of something going on down the road and it gives you something to look at instead of just being totally black. Same thing goes for the sand on the beach. I'm just going to take a new brush right over the sand and see if anything exciting will happen with that. I'm not going to change the color temperature. I will add clarity though because that's the fastest way to see if something will change. And I don't think I really see anything too thrilling. Yeah, nothing nothing to really change there. That's a debatable if it even helped or not, but it does add a little bit, a tiny bit of visibility. Again, zoom out to make sure that you're not doing some something crazy that you're don't notice because they're too close in. There's one really big artistic decision you need to settle on last and this, I tend to not like it because it doesn't appeal to me and I think it, too many people are spamming this noob thing, but raising just the very, very darkest blacks in the tone curve and then lowering the parts in the middle gives you that really sleepy Instagram look that you see everybody using that like instant, instant movie filter. Um, if you zoom out, you can see that it raised it puts a film over the darkest spots. I don't really like it like that. I like the clarity, but if you want to do like a sleepy slumbery look, you can go for that. Now that we've added everything with this photo, we're completely done. Contrast comes last. Everybody looks at contrast and assumes right away that that's what you should go for because movies, but you don't get Batman versus Superman instantly by just adding a bunch of contrast. You need to make all the edits. And then when you add contrast, you are strengthening everything that you just spent all that time doing. So decide if you want less of what you just spent all the time doing or more. And right now I think adding a little bit more is good if I raise some shadows. So that to me is a pleasant looking photo. Maybe debatably I can take out some saturation. I can change the color temperature, but I already, no matter what, have a really visibly diverse photo. So the changes now are fun. If I raise or lower shadows, you know, I get completely different artistic appeals. And um, same with color temperature. If I drag that back and forth, I can decide what tickles me inside and makes me want to show mom. And I'm not on camera, just doing it really quickly the other day. This is what I came up with, less saturated. But either way, you know, it gives you a lot to think about. And now you have a photo of a sunset to work with.